Hey everyone, this video is your introduction to polar graphing. Um, something new, kind of unusual. I think it's kind of cool, so hopefully you'll um, learn to appreciate it as well. There are four parts to your lesson today. The first one is going to be a very brief introduction. There's going to be a Desmos activity, so you'll watch the very first beginning of this video, pause it, then do the Desmos activity, then come back so that you can have more of a discussion or more of a learning going on about it, but you really need to watch the Desmos activity first, or do the Desmos activity first. Okay, so here is our brief introduction so that you can then move on to the Desmos. So we're gonna be learning about graphing polar coordinates today, graphing polar points. And a, the polar coordinate system is something that's graphed on a circle as opposed to on a, the grid, right? So your normal XY plane is graphed on a grid that is all squares. The polar graphing system is going to be on circles. So it's basically like a bunch of unit circles, but then the, 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 the unit is not one. It keeps getting bigger radii, bigger radii. So for instance, on this little picture that's over here, you can see that this point that's here, that is on, I don't know, maybe circle 1.5 or whatever. So it's on the, this is the second circle or this circle with a radius of two. So that makes this be the radius of one. So this little point here is, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere between one and two. Okay? And it's on some angle there as well. Okay, so this is what you're gonna be learning about. When you graph a polar point, you graph it in this format. So it's gonna look like R comma theta, where R is the radius of the circle that you're plotting the point on, and theta is the angle that is that you're going to go to to plot the point, okay? So for instance, real quick, let me get rid of this stuff. This point here maybe isn't quite as good. Let's say I know that this angle right up here, that angle is pi over three and it's on the second circle because that's a two there. So this point right here would be radius of two, angle of pi over three, okay? All right, you're going to need to know a few of these pieces of information as well to help you understand the Desmos activity. So first of all, when you have the equation of a circle, which is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, you may need to convert it so that it looks like this, where the radius is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. This is, by the way, the Pythagorean theorem. Then this would be the way you would get the radius if you have a triangle. This is your normal SOHCAHTOA cosine and sine information. So normal SOHCAHTOA is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, our adjacent side is our X side and our hypotenuse is R. There's our Y side. So cosine of theta is X over R. Well, in the world of polars, we're gonna wanna think of it as X is equal to R cosine theta. And then the same up is going to apply for sine sine becomes y equals r sine theta. And then tangent is actually not that different. Tangent is equal to y over x. But a lot of times what you're gonna to need to do, you might wanna add this to your paper, is solve for theta by doing inverse tangent of y over x. Okay, so here's all the stuff you'll wanna write on your paper. Now you're going to go to, to Google Classroom to get the link for the Desmos activity. Okay? And it's all about converting polar points to rectangular points and vice versa. Okay, so hopefully you went ahead and did that Desmos activity first. If you didn't, you need to go back and do that right now. I'm going to do some more graphing with you, hopefully, as I go through it, because I'm going to go pretty fast. It's going to be because... <coughs> Not because I sneeze, but because um, you already did decimals and hopefully it makes some sense. Okay, but we'll, I'll also even maybe convert a little bit while we're at it. Maybe I'll do one of them at converting. Okay, um, so when I graph these, I have th these four points where the radius is four and the angle is somewhere on the circle, the unit circle. So here's my pi over three angle right here, and I want to look for the fourth, I want to look for the fourth circle so one two three four so this point right here is four comma pi over three you know what? i'll just call it a 
Okay, now if I wanted to figure out what the coordinates of that were in rectangular form, I would need to think of this as a triangle. And while I'm thinking of it as a triangle, I can even show you when we're done how we can kind of look at it on a rectangular grid and kind of see the same thing. Okay, so this is a circle that has a radius of four and it is similar to the triangle that is on the unit circle with a radius of one. It's pi over three. So on my pi over three triangle, my short side of a half is down here and my long side of root three over two is the y. Well, I'm going from a radius of one to a radius of four, so I multiplied the one by four to get that side. So I'm gonna multiply a half by four, that side is two, I'm going to multiply root 3 over 2 by 4, and this side is 2 root 3. So the coordinates in rectangular are 2 comma 2 root 3. And the, the way this kind of works in rectangular, if you want to think of each of these circles is a whole number because it's the radius. So for instance, that first circle, let me actually change that color so it looks better. Mm -hmm. I'll draw the second one with that color, I guess. So there's the second circle. Here's my, whoop, here's my first one. I'm trying to grab that guy. So there's the first one. This distance from the origin, or what's called the pole, out to the first circle is one, and then out to the second circle is two. So you can see, if I had done a better job of graphing it, that this point A is two over on the X axis. I could go do the same thing with the Y's and it's a little bit, well, it's between three and four actually, because it's kind of in between these two circles here. All right, that's a whole bunch of stuff there. I'm gonna delete the circles so they don't get confusing. Maybe even delete some of this stuff. So you're just looking at the point and then we're gonna graph the rest of them. So now when I graph four negative pi over three, that means I go in the negative direction for the angle, but still the same radius. So negative pi over three is actually five pi over three. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go out to the fourth circle, one, two, three, four, and there is point B. It's the same triangle, so realistically, I should be able to know that that in rectangular is two negative two root three. Sorry, I don't know why I'm coughing. Okay, um, point C, positive pi over three is the angle, so I go to the pi over three angle in quadrant one, but then the negative radius tells us to swing across to the other side, and we're actually gonna plot the point on the fourth circle over here. So this is actually four pi over three, comma, or four comma four pi over three is another way to look at it. Okay, the coordinates of this then are in quadrant three, so negative two comma negative two root three. But another thing you can do to get those coordinates, if the whole triangle similarity thing that I just did was confusing, is use what we did on the first screen there, the fact that the coordinates are our cosine theta and our sine theta, because co our cosine theta is x and our sine theta is y. So for our problem here, this point C, R is negative 4, and the angle is pi over 3. So I could do this and figure out what's going on there. Okay, So cosine of pi over 3 is um, 1 half. So that gives me 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2 times negative 4 is negative 2 root 3. So that would be another way to think of it. It's kind of a formulaic way versus this way was more like an intrinsic kind of way of doing it. Okay, last one, I'm going to go in the negative angle direction. So I'm going to go down kind of like where B is at. But because my radius is also negative, then I have to shoot across 180 degrees to the other side. So point D tends, turns out to be in quadrant 4 or sorry, quadrant two, and those points are negative two, comma, positive two, root three. Okay, so now we're going to move on, and we're going to do some points that are not unit circle points. So these points are things that, um, let's see, look at, I just did all the work here for you. 
I didn't need that screen. Um, here, this is where I thought I was headed next. Um, I have these rectangular points that I want to convert to polar. So I'm going to graph them, see what quadrant they're in. I'm going to use that, those rules that we just did a few seconds ago. Okay, so I've got the point 1, 2. So I'm going to call that point A. Then I have the point negative 3, 1. So we'll call that B. Then I have 4, negative 1. So let's call that C. And then I have negative 2, negative 3. So let's call that D. Okay. So what you need to do to, to write it in polar form, remember it's R comma theta. Okay. So I need the radius. The radius is just a Pythagorean theorem problem. So it is just understanding that I have a side of 1 and then a side of 2, and I can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The formula was this. So you can memorize that as a new additional formula if you want, but it's, it's really just understanding that it's a right triangle. So for a, I get the radius is the square root of 5. And then I need to find the angle. Well, unfortunately, this angle isn't on the unit circle, so that's when the tangent formula is going to come in. So I'm going to do inverse tangent of y over x. 2 over 1 is 2. That's our angle. And I really don't have enough space on the screen. So point A, we would write in polar form as root 5, comma, inverse tangent of 2. Done. Okay. All of the other points are a little more complicated because, well, C is not bad, but all the other ones are more complicated because when you do inverse tangent, the inverse doesn't put it into that quadrant. So this is that whole principal solution thing. So we're just going to do one, and then we'll move on. I'm going to do point D, which was um, negative 2, negative 3. Okay. So I have the point negative 2, negative 3. So the radius of that would be the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 13. Then I need to find the angle. So I find the angle by doing inverse tangent. Well, that's going to be negative 3 over negative 2 or 3 halves. Now here's where it gets a little tricky, and it's all about that principal solution stuff. So this is a positive value in here because the two negatives canceled. When I have inverse tangent of a positive, it actually puts me in quadrant 1, which is why I need to add pi onto this to put it actually into quadrant 3. So my final answer would be the square root of 13 is my radius, and then I'm going to add pi onto that angle. So I'm going to add pi onto inverse tangent of 3 halves. This is point D, which was negative 2 negative, no, sorry, did I label those wrong? I did, didn't I? Point, negative 2, negative 3 is point D, but I don't know what I was calling it. Point D is negative 2, negative 3, sorry. Okay, um, let's stop with those, because honestly, we don't need to worry too much about these with the inverse things that are not on the unit circle. We'll spend a lot of time doing ones that are on the unit circle. For instance, two of these on this screen are on the unit circle. And I actually want to change one of them because I'm not, there's no point in keep practicing the ones that are not on the unit circle. So we're going to change number two, and I'm going to make it be, oh, let's say, 2 comma negative 2 root 3. Okay, so we're going to change two of that one. We'll get to that one in a second. So the first one is negative 3, 3. It's really hard to graph a rectangular point on, the coordinate, on this coordinate plane with it being polar. These aren't terrible because they're whole numbers, but it's still really tricky to do. So instead, you need to turn it into its polar form. So you need to figure out what angle it is. Well, this is, these are making up two sides of a triangle. So the two sides of the triangle end up in quadrant 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This is a triangle where the x side and the y side are the same. That is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, but it is in quadrant 2, so that means our angle would be the 
angle and quadrant two, and we're going to use uh, radians, so that is 3 pi over 4. And then you either know how to quickly find the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90, or you do Pythagorean theorem, and you do that R formula, R equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, so this would be the square root of 9 plus 9, which is 18. You're welcome to leave it as 18, or you can remember your rules from geometry and know that your radius is 3 root 2. So this point is 3 root 2, comma 3 pi over 4. Okay, so that is on the 3 pi over 4 circle. 3 root 2 is a little tricky to figure out where that's at as well. 1, uh, that's somewhere out around probably about past 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, so let's say there. Okay. Which that's about 1, 2, 3, negative 3. I'm a, I could probably be a little bit bigger, but we're pretty close. So there's our point. I'm going to skip over to number 3 because number 3 is the nearly identical situation. It's 4, negative 4. So we're in quadrant 4 instead of quadrant 2. But otherwise, it is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, which means my hypotenuse or my radius is 4 root 2. And since it's a 45 degree angle, that's a pi over 4. In quadrant 4, that is 7 pi over 4. So this would be 4 root 2, 7 pi over 4. You could also call it 4 root 2, negative pi over 4, and go in the opposite direction. Okay, last one. I guess I should graph that for you guys. Sorry, let me go back. So negative pi over 4 is down here. And 4 root 2 is going to be something like, that is, whoops, that is not what I meant to do. It's not the best video I've ever done, you guys. Sorry. 4 root 2 is about a little bit bigger than 5, like 5 and a half. So we want the 5, about 5.5. 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So maybe about here. Okay, let's get this video done. 2 comma negative 2 root 3, that's it also in quadrant 4. Um, this triangle, I'll go ahead and draw it, is 2 negative 2 root 3 like this. So if you recognize it as what it is, which is a 30, 60, 90, awesome. And you can just use what you know about that type of triangle to get the hypotenuse. Or you can do x squared, which is 4, plus y squared, which is 4 times 3, so 12, and do the square root. So my radius is the square root of 16, which is 4, which is what you can get if you remember how to do your 30, 60, 90. Now, if you didn't remember that this was a 30, 60, 90, then what you would need to do is do inverse tangent of the y value over the x value, so negative 2 root 3 over 2, so inverse tangent of negative root 3 happens to be in quadrant 4, and that is, again, um, that would be my pi over 6 angle, so in quadrant 4, that's 11 pi over 6, or negative pi over 6, either one is actually acceptable, mm, except for I have to actually give the right angle, try that again. 5 pi over 3, or negative pi over 3. I hope somebody caught that, that I was doing that wrong. So that is this angle here, but my radius is nice and even for 1, 2, 3, 4, so right there. Okay, so we're just doing points today. Then tomorrow we'll be learning about converting lines and in rectangular into polar form.